Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Pastor George, and um, I know I'm doing this a little bit later in the uh, day than normal, but uh, this morning uh, my wife and I had a few things we had to get done, um, and uh, handing out lunches for for school students, and um, but now I still wanted to connect with you and share a little bit from God's Word. Um, we've been looking at the events leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ during this Holy Week. And um, today I'm going to look at a scripture in John chapter 12. And um, this is a couple days before the Last Supper and before the night Jesus was arrested and, and betrayed. But it says, Six days after before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was. We remember Lazarus. He, he was the one that Jesus rose from the dead. And his sisters, Mary and Martha, and they had a house there. Uh, they're dwelling there in Bethany. And Bethany was a short ways from Jerusalem, within a, 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 a walking distance to Jerusalem. And apparently what Jesus was doing was he and his followers, rather than staying in the city of Jerusalem, they would go out and stay in Bethany with their friends, and then they would walk into the city. Jesus would minister during the week and during the day there, and they would uh, go back um, uh, to Bethany. And, uh, and, and so this is where they are at. Uh, they have thrown a dinner for Jesus, probably just a, a celebration dinner of Jesus's raising Lazarus from the dead and just wanting to show their appreciation. But it says, So they gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with them at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Now, other gospel passages say that uh, she anointed um, his head. They identify a woman. They don't tell tell her name, but they said a woman anointed his head. But here John identifies it as Mary, and he says their feet. And probably both happened. There was uh, that much oil that she probably anointed, anointed um, his head and then his feet and wiped it with her hair. And this was a very uh, intimate act of, of devotion. And we need to understand it was not there was, was nothing sensual or immoral about it. It was simply an act of, of love and devotion that, that um, Mary was showing to Jesus. Um, and and the, the perfume itself was very expensive. Uh, scholars believe that it, um, being worth 300 denarii, it would have been a year's wages. Now, this was no small gift, no small offering, no small sacrifice. And, uh, but she did it willingly. And, and not everyone, though, was pleased with what went on. It says, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having a charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. But Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. You know, Jesus was not dismissing the importance of ministry to the poor. Jesus often... Um, uh, commanded his disciples. This, this was taking care of the poor and needy is very important. But uh, this, this passage says that Judas wasn't concerned about this either. He was simply using his piety as a cover-up for his own um, selfish interests. And I, I, I must say, I am somewhat um, convicted as I read this passage, because I can't help but think myself of this extravagant gift that, that Mary gave to Jesus. And, and thinking, uh, you know, boy, that seemed a lot. That seemed so much. And I'm convicted, though, by this is, isn't he worth it? You see, often when we come to the Lord, we come because we are in need. 
We come with our prayer requests. We come with our hands open, saying, God, we need you to bless us. And God tells us to come and bring our cares to him. He calls us to come and bring our our, our needs to him. We have that privilege of, of casting all of our cares upon him, of, of coming to him in our time of need. And, and really, God doesn't need anything from us. But Mary doesn't just give Jesus this oil. What she is doing is giving Jesus her heart and her full devotion. And I think to myself is, God needs nothing from me, but it doesn't mean he does not want anything from me. He wants a heart that is willing to trust him, a heart that is willing to follow him, a heart that is willing to, to uh, give all if necessary. Why not because of what he gives to me? Simply because he is worth it simply because he is worthy of all that I have, all that I am. Um, I don't give to God to get from God. That's what uh, Judas's motive was. Judas was following Jesus with this idea that uh, somehow Jesus would become the Messiah, Jesus would be the king, and, and he had... He had Jesus on an agenda, and this is, is why some scholars believe that Judas betrayed him as he was trying to force Jesus' hand into fulfilling um, Judas' agenda. And so often um, we come to God with that kind of idea, but Mary was not coming with an agenda. She was not coming with an expectation. She was coming with all and coming with a heart of worship. And my heart's cry is, Lord, give me a heart like Mary, a heart that loves you, not because you place something in my hand, not because you meet any need, but simply because I have fallen in love with you more than anything else in this world. Father, today, as we uh, get ready for um, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, we pray that you will Use this time to search our own hearts. May we have a heart like Mary, a heart of full devotion. May we see your worth and your value. Not simply what you can do for us, but Lord, the worth of how much we owe to you. And Father, we can never repay, and there is nothing that we have that you need. But Lord, you long, you long to be loved by us the way that you have loved us. And we pray that that love would flow into our hearts for you. God, give us hearts of worship today, pure and, and undefiled in Jesus' name. Hey, we look forward to connecting with you. We're praying for you. We love you. Um, and uh, hopefully you can join us as we continue on this uh, Holy Week de uh, devotions, and um, especially on Sunday morning as we're going to do another live streaming worship service. Uh, keep my wife in prayer that she is going to be feeling up to singing along, because I know you'll be a lot more blessed hearing her beautiful voice, um, you know, not just mine, but we are, uh, we are just standing together through all of this. God bless you folks.